In heavy equipment, a handful of brands have achieved near-mythic status. Caterpillar, John Deere, Case. Names that define construction and agricultural machinery in the public imagination. Yet long before these giants came to dominate, another narrative unfolded quietly in the background. One driven by bold engineering and genuine innovation, shaping the industry before slipping into obscurity. This is the story of the Tractomotive Corporation. The year was 1945, World War II had just ended, and America stood at the threshold of an unprecedented construction boom. Highways needed building, cities needed expanding, suburbs needed creating, and all of this work required machines, specifically loaders capable of moving earth efficiently. In Findlay, Ohio, a group of former Alice Chalmers engineers saw an opportunity. These men understood the limitations of existing equipment. They knew that the wheel loaders of their era were essentially afterthoughts, agricultural tractors retrofitted with buckets and lifting mechanisms. What the industry needed was purpose-built machinery. Together, they founded Tractor Motive Corporation. Their timing proved impeccable. Post-war America was hungry for construction equipment and Tractor Motive positioned itself to feed that appetite. Just one year after its founding, Tractor Motive achieved something remarkable. In 1946, the firm built the first hydraulically powered bucket tilt on a loader. This innovation might sound modest today, but at the time it represented a significant leap forward in loader capability and operator control. Before hydraulic tilting, operators struggled to maintain material in their buckets during lifting and transport. The hydraulic tilt mechanism allowed precise control over bucket angle, dramatically improving efficiency and reducing spillage. It was the kind of practical engineering solution that defined Tractomotive's approach to machine design. The new venture's first product was the TLW loader, built on the Alice Chalmers WF tractor platform. This established a pattern that would characterize Tractor Motive's early years, using proven Alice Chalmers components as foundations for their own innovations. The relationship between Tractor Motive and Alice Chalmers was more than coincidental. The founders had come from AC, and they maintained close ties with their former employer. This connection proved mutually beneficial. In 1950, Tractor Motive relocated from Findlay to a new plant in Deerfield, Illinois. That same year, the organization signed an agreement allowing its products to be sold through the extensive Alice Chalmers dealer network. This arrangement gave Tractor Motive immediate access to a nationwide sales and service infrastructure without the enormous capital investment required to build one independently. The partnership expanded over time. Tractor Motive constructed pipe-laying side booms, rippers, and loader attachments for Alice Chalmers track-type tractors. Meanwhile, AC wheel tractors served as base units for Tractor Motive's wheel loaders. The arrangement was elegant in its simplicity. Each manufacturer focused on their strengths while supporting the other. Tractor Motive marketed its wheel loaders under the name Tracto Loaders, and they bore the distinctive association with Alice Chalmers' quality. This branding helped establish credibility in a competitive marketplace. While early Tractomotive machines were essentially modified tractors, the TL-10 represented something entirely different. Introduced in 1951, this one cubic yard loader was designed and built from the ground up as a wheel loader, not an adaptation of existing agricultural equipment. The TL-10 incorporated several advances, it was the first Tractomotive machine to feature a torque converter drive, which improved power delivery and operator comfort. Buyers could choose between gasoline and diesel power plants, offering flexibility based on operating conditions and fuel availability. The design proved exceptionally durable. The TL-10 remained in continuous production for 13 years, from 1951 through 1964. Such longevity spoke to both the soundness of the original engineering and the machine's popularity among contractors. If the TL-10 established Tractor Motive's credibility, the TL-12 made the firm a major player. This model became a runaway success, selling in the thousands worldwide and competing head-to-head -head with industry heavyweights like Case and Huff for market share. 
Introduced in 1954, the TL12 brought several firsts to the Tractomotive lineup. It was the manufacturer's first all-wheel drive loader and the first to combine four-wheel drive with a torque converter and power shuttle transmission. These features dramatically improved traction, productivity and ease of operation. The specifications told the story of a serious working machine. Weighing approximately 6 tons and carrying a 1.25 cubic yard bucket, the TL12 handled the demanding tasks that contractors faced daily. Power came from either a 63 horsepower 4-cylinder gasoline engine or a 77 horsepower 6-cylinder diesel, both supplied by Alice Chalmers. The TL12 remained in production for 11 years, finally yielding to its successor in 1965. By then, it had helped establish Tractomotive as a name that contractors recognized and trusted. Building on their success, Tractomotive's engineers developed an entire family of progressively larger machines. Each model number roughly corresponded to its place in the size hierarchy. The TL14 carried three cubic yards. The TL16 handled four. The TL20 moved five cubic yards while the TL30 managed six. At the top of the range sat the massive TL40, rated at seven cubic yards, an enormous capacity for its era. This comprehensive lineup allowed Tractomotive to serve contractors across virtually every application and budget level. A small grading contractor might start with a TL10 or TL12, while a quarry operation or major earth-moving project demanded the capabilities of the larger designations. The TL40 also spawned an interesting variant. Alice Chalmers used it as the basis for the D40 wheel dozer, produced in limited quantities. This demonstrated the versatility of Tractomotive's basic platform design. All Tractomotive wheel loaders shared certain fundamental characteristics. They featured rigid, non-articulating frames with rear wheel steering assisted by power boost. The operator sat in a forward position, providing excellent visibility of the bucket and work area. The engine mounted behind the operator, serving double duty as part of the machine's counterweight. Early models used foot clutches, but Tractomotive's engineers pioneered power shuttle transmissions in loader applications. These systems reduced the constant shifting required during typical loading cycles, easing operator fatigue and speeding production. As technology advanced, the shuttles gave way to full power shift transmissions, usually sourced from Allison or Twindisk. The manufacturer consistently offered buyers a choice of power plants. Gasoline engines suited certain applications and operating environments, while diesels offered economy and durability for high utilization work. Eventually, rising fuel costs eliminated gasoline as a practical option, and diesel became the standard. Attachments expanded the machine's versatility. Beyond standard buckets, operators could specify rock buckets, dozer blades, snow blowers, side booms and forks. The wheel loader essentially served as the original all-terrain forklift. When additional versatility was required, the Drott 4-in-1 bucket could be fitted, though this necessitated an extra hydraulic valve. For all their innovations, Tractomotive's rigid frame loaders carried inherent limitations. The non-articulating design required more maneuvering space than later articulated machines would need. In tight quarters, this reduced productivity and complicated operations. More concerning were safety issues. The loader lift arms, mounted close to the machine's narrow chassis, posed amputation hazards to careless operators during lowering. The compact operator's compartment, while providing good visibility, grew fatiguing during extended shifts. Cabs, when installed, suffered from poor insulation and excessive noise. Perhaps most troubling, these early enclosures proved difficult to exit quickly if a machine overturned. These weren't unique to Tractor Motive. They characterized the entire industry during this period, but they helped drive the eventual shift toward articulated designs with centrally positioned operators. Throughout the 1950s, the Alice Chalmers connection deepened. What had begun as an informal relationship between former employees and their previous employer evolved into something more formal. The dealer network integration proved so successful that the two organizations' fates became intertwined. In 1959, Alice Chalmers acquired Tractomotive outright. 
The independent manufacturer that had started in a small Ohio town 14 years earlier was now part of a major industrial conglomerate. The acquisition marked the end of Tractomotive as a separate entity, but not the end of its influence. Alice Chalmers recognized the value of what the Tractomotive engineers had built and chose to honor that legacy. Following the acquisition, Alice Chalmers introduced its own line of indigenously designed articulated steer wheel loaders. The new machines, from the 345 to the 945, represented the next generation of loader technology. They addressed the maneuverability and safety limitations that had constrained rigid frame designs. But Alice Chalmers made a telling decision. The new articulated loaders carried designations like TL545, TL645, and so forth. That TL prefix was no accident. It was a direct acknowledgement of the tractomotive heritage that had made Alice Chalmers a serious competitor in the wheel loader market. The 545, which replaced the legendary TL12 in 1965, carried forward the tradition of practical, productive machines that working contractors could depend upon. The Deerfield plant that Tractomotive had built in 1950 continued producing wheel loaders under Alice Chalmers' ownership. Through the 1960s and 1970s, machines bearing the TL designation rolled off that Illinois production line, serving construction sites and quarries around the world. But the construction equipment industry was consolidating. On December 4, 1980, Fiat Alice announced it would close the Deerfield facility and relocate production to Springfield. The plant where Tractomotive had manufactured thousands of wheel loaders would fall silent. The Tractomotive name, already fading from memory, would soon be forgotten entirely by all but the most dedicated historians of construction equipment. Today, few people recognize the Tractomotive name. The machines themselves have largely vanished, replaced by generations of more modern equipment. The Deerfield plant has long since been repurposed or demolished. Yet Tractomotive's contributions to the construction equipment industry deserve recognition. The hydraulic bucket tilt, the purpose-built wheel loader design, the integration of torque converters and power shuttle transmissions, the comprehensive model range serving every market segment. These innovations didn't happen by accident. They emerged from the vision of a small group of engineers who left established positions to build something new. They saw what the industry needed and created machines to fill that need. The next time you see a modern wheel loader, articulated, enclosed, air-conditioned, loaded with electronics, remember that it descends from simpler machines. And some of those ancestors carried the Tractomotive name, built by pioneers who helped define what a wheel loader could become. Tractomotive may be forgotten, but its legacy endures in every bucket of earth moved by a wheel loader today.